Hello and today I've got a video of a repair of this induction cooktop. Um, it's actually just laid out on the living room floor at the moment, temporarily hooked up to a power supply just to demonstrate the fault. Now uh, what you'll find is that the uh, two left hand plates um, seem to come on okay, no problem at all. But these two right hand ones, neither of them work, it's completely dead. Now this is fairly typical of an induction hob failure because quite often you find that uh, inside a four unit like this there are actually two control boards and so obviously there's been a major failure on one board but the board's still working fine. Now I've already been inside, I've done my research on the internet and actually found a French website which I had to do a lot of Google Translate um, so yeah, look, I'm just standing on the shoulders of giants in terms of uh, somebody else has worked out this repair, but I thought I'd just put it into a video and show it to you. So um, let's just take the ceramic uh, top off first, the glass top, and I'll show you the two boards, and then we'll get them onto the bench, and I'll show you the repair. Just to quickly show you, there are, I think, eight Torx head... Um screws just holding the glass plate in position so I'm just going to remove all those and then lift the glass plate off. So quite easy to get inside and you can see that um, there are two completely separate sections for the controls of the uh, four hops. So what I need to do now is just remove um, the printed circuit board. The uh, problem isn't with this control board on the front here, it's actually the power supply board which is right underneath. So we'll just remove the two hot plates to, to get access to that. Okay, so I've got it uh, out on the workbench now, and you can see there's this uh, dirty great big uh, heat sink on the printed circuit board. It covers quite a lot of the power components, at least, anyway. Now, um, it does present a problem because the components we want to change are these two capacitors here, which probably could be changed, um, given the heat sink's just on, on the edge there. But the third one is uh, buried right inside underneath, so really it's, it's, it's not an option. I know it looks quite hard, but in fact the heat sink is only held on in one, two, um, three spots. And actually, because I've done this repair before, uh, it's not that difficult. The best technique is to heat up the, the joint, obviously. Um, and then apply a, just a certain amount of finger pressure so that when the solder melts that that just pops out and then work around to, to the next one. I wouldn't try and remove the solder entirely uh, and hope that you're going to get a clean hole. That just doesn't seem to work. I mean you can certainly remove the vast majority of it with a solder pump possibly. But uh, no, as I say, the technique that I found the best is to uh, say just apply a little bit of pressure. Oh, sorry about the fingers, I, I lost a battle with a, a router a few days ago, so I'm struggling a little bit here. But um, yeah, just apply a little bit of finger pressure whilst you're applying the heat to this side of the board, and that uh, joint should just let go. You can then clean the hole up before we have to put it back on again afterwards. Anyway, I'll do that off camera, and we'll have another look at the components that need to be changed. So just to show you, um, as I say, I've done a couple of these repairs before and I've got the capacitors out of the circuit here to uh, to test. Um, so yeah, there's three of uh, one size and they're uh, 0.47 microfarads each, so 470 nano. And if I uh, just put one of these on here, they're unpolarized. So I just put one of these on the tester. Give that a quick test. And here we go, what do we get? 
Yeah, 3.2 nanofarad. So look, it's it's way, way, way down. It should be 400 nanofarads. If I get um, one of the new ones out of the packet here, see if I can't get them mixed up, eh? Just pop that on. Press the test button. You can't really do this test in circuit either, unfortunately. You need to re remove the items. Oh, that's clearly... Oh, there we go, my lead's come off. going to call me a liar. Have another go. And what's the result? There we go, 450. So yes, yeah, it's supposed to be 470 nanofarads, 0.47 of a microfarad. So clearly, um, and I won't go through and test all these, what I'm finding actually is it, it is these 470 nanofarad ones which are failing. This one here, which is a slightly larger 680, or 0.68 micro, they seem actually okay. But um, seeing as I bought the spares and everything, I'm uh, replacing all four capacitors at the same time. So I'm just going to do that on this board and uh, pop it back in. So there we have it. I've actually just changed out these three capacitors this time. I did actually test this one in circuit. It's still showing over 600 nano farad, so I'm going to leave it in circuit. As I said, other components on this board which apparently are weak and probably um, might cause you problems. Uh, but I haven't actually found it in, in, in my cases. I did buy the spare parts, um, but haven't ended up using them. So there are these capacitors um, in these two locations here. There is this large capacitor here, which I've got in a slightly different form factor. It's a high voltage, 450 volt, 10 microfarad capacitor. But uh, these all look okay. There's no bulging or splitting on the top. And then there's just one chip here, which I purchased. Um, I think it's the switch mode power supply chip. It's just sitting underneath the transformer. So yeah, that might be a little bit tricky. Uh, but yeah, it just gives you an idea of uh, a lot of the failures occurring uh, around uh, this uh, side of the board. Obviously, you can get MOSFET uh, or IGBT failures uh, as well. They're reasonably common. But uh, you should be able to determine that by uh, seeing whether there's a short circuit or open circuit on, on those. Apart from that, uh, everything's okay. As I say, I'm just going to pop this back in and uh, we'll be finished. So there we have it. I've actually just changed out these three capacitors this time. I did actually test this one in circuit. It's still showing over 600 nano farads, so I'm going to leave it in circuit. As I said, other components on this board which apparently are weak and probably um, might cause you problems. Uh, but I haven't actually found it in, in, in my cases. I did buy the spare parts, um, but haven't ended up using them. So there are these capacitors um, in these two locations here. There is this large capacitor here, which I've got in a slightly different form factor. It's a high voltage, 450 volt, 10 microfarad capacitor. But uh, these all look okay. There's no bulging or splitting on the top. And then there's just one chip here, which I purchased. Um, I think it's the switch mode power supply chip. It's just sitting underneath the transformer. So yeah, that might be a little bit tricky. Uh, but yeah, it just gives you an idea of uh, a lot of the failures occurring uh, around uh, this uh, side of the board. Obviously, you can get MOSFET uh, or IGBT failures uh, as well. They're reasonably common. But uh, you should be able to determine that by uh, seeing whether there's a short circuit or open circuit on, on those. Apart from that, uh, everything's okay. As I say, I'm just going to pop this back in and uh, we'll be finished. So I just thought I'd show you getting the clips on. I've got two out of three on this third one's just yet to be clipped in. They are a bit tricky, they are a bit tight, but they're not um, horrendous. Uh, I've put a small amount of um, heat compound, heat transfer compound just on the backs there. Because these are all dried out, so I just uh, smeared a bit of that on there. Now the technique, see if I can't damage some more fingers. But um, just using a screwdriver blade, I've got one side clipped in. You can't really see that, but I've got that right-hand side of the clip clipped in. I'm just going to apply quite a bit of pressure to this outside. But I'm going to put my fingers behind the screwdriver blade, so if it slips, I'm not going to hurt myself. And then just, oh yes, there we go. Nice firm clip. 
all done. Ready to be reinstalled. Just a quick word of warning, um, don't be tempted to power the unit up like I have here and press these little metal plates which are the, the, the buttons uh, which are normally under the glass of course because um, there's quite a bit of um, AC voltage, the 75 volts on, on these little metal plates so yeah don't, don't be tempted to uh, try and uh, check the unit before you put the glass plate on. I think uh, this side was working previously and now there we go we've got this side working also of course it's not going to work without the pans on there but uh, as it's a power supply problem you can see that it, uh, it comes on no problem at all so just three capacitors there x2 capacitors uh, on the mains input that needed to be replaced and the unit's now working so uh, thanks to that french website um, i better say au revoir until the next one see you now bye